everyone. Happy Halloween. Uh, thank you for joining me in this uh, panel. Uh, I'm really glad that everybody was here to, everyone's here to join me. I know that activities are very limited this year, but it means a lot to me that you guys are here and ready to hear me talk about the dead because what other better time to do so. Um, this panel is going to be in regards to Victorian mourning, um, how to use the aesthetic in your Lolita outfits and um, how to do it in a way that it is not necessarily historically accurate, but kind of gives a nod to the time and gives it a, a bit of authenticity. Um, so let's get started. Just a, a brief inter introduction. Uh, my name is Ashley Marie. Um, I go by Marie Dauphine on Instagram and uh, you can follow me there. Uh, I post virtually anything. I, I love to dress in Lolita fashion, but I also dress in uh, vintage, antique. I I also an oddities collector. I I post anything on there. So go ahead and just follow me and, and we, can, uh, we can be friends. But um, as far as like my history with Lolita, I have been involved in the fashion for about, I would say about maybe 10 to 11 years already. It's been a pretty wild ride as far as my style goes. I feel like my style has evolved a lot since I've started, um, which is kind of the reason why I wanted to shine light on this aesthetic because I feel like my style reflects this now in, in as opposed to when I first started I was more into prints and and things like that but I feel like my style has been a little bit more subdued as of late um I guess the style that I lean more towards would be gothic gothic lolita um I've always been interested in gothic styles um ever since I was a young teenager and I would like to say that uh how I dress now is pretty much an evolution of how I started. Um, I also make jewelry and um, you can follow my jewelry page, which is at Taxidermy Her Bones. Um, I make earrings, jewelry necklaces uh, with ethically sourced animal bones. Um, I also make cloach jars with taxidermied uh, insects. And uh, you could just go ahead and follow me there and contact me and we could talk about any of this stuff. I, I love talking about taxidermy, uh, history, creepy Victorian stuff. So that's an introduction of who I am. So we're going to start this uh, panel with a brief overlook of the Victorian era and how Victorian mourning uh, came to be. So for a little bit of a history lesson, the Victorian era lasted between the years 1837 and 1901. Uh, during that time, uh, Victorian fashion evolved many, many times. Uh, and I say that because if you look at certain pieces from certain time periods of the Victorian era, it doesn't necessarily look like what people would wear, say, maybe five years later, 10 years later. The fashion evolved a lot during this time. Um, but today we're gonna to focus on how Victorian mourning uh, became adapted into society. Um, so for Queen Victoria, uh, the death of her husband really affected her. It affected her so much to the point where she was in full mourning till her death. She wore all black, the veils, everything. She wore it till her death. Um, he died in the year 1861. Um, she would, and as I mentioned, she wore everything black, her bonnet, her gown, the veils, the jewelry. Um, this was something that was integrated in her daily life because his death really affected her. Um, another reason why I see that Victorian mourning practices were adopted into everyday society at the time was because of the high mortality rate. Um, children, unfortunately, um, were dying at a high rate. Um, you know, people would not live to to see sometimes even past 40. It was a very difficult time. So this is how they were able to honor the dead and um, anything that Queen Victoria would do, usually the so uh, society would also integrate it into their everyday life. Um, not only with fashion, but as well as photography, 
Uh, there was spirit photography. There was, of course, um, Memento Mori photography where uh, a little dark, but they would uh, prop up the dead body. And that would sometimes be the only photo of say a child that they had. This was something that they did um, as well as integrate hair into jewelry, um, typically of their loved ones that have passed. This is something that they also did as well. So, but since today we're focusing more on the fashion aspect, um, I'm gonna go down what is considered the stages of mourning and the material that was typically used for the time as far as uh, mourning garments go. So these are the three stages of mourning. Um, this was something that typically women would do. Men would really not adhere to these um, strict rules as, as much as women did. Men would typically only be in mourning for about six months um, as far as how to show uh, public that they were in mourning. They would use like a black armband here. After the six months, they would remove it and basically go find someone to replace their loved one, be it a wife or what have you. It, they didn't really have that strict rules as far as women go. Women, on the other hand, uh, had rules that they had to adhere to. Um, full mourning is considered when you know your loved one passed away, be it a husband or child. Um, the widow would dress in mourning for a full year. A black veil, which is also which was also commonly known at the time as a widow's weeds, was to cover her face the entire time, and no jewelry was permitted. So, um, in the first photo that I have here on the slide, uh, you can clearly see that these women would be considered to be in full mourning. Uh, their dresses don't have that many, you know, decorative aspects to them. They are wearing the veil over their face. Very very somber outfit. So you knew that a woman was in her first uh, full mourning. And, and again, this typically lasted for about a year. Uh, there was second mourning, which a veil was able to be lifted and worn behind the head. Jewelry was permitted, but the widow was required to wear black. And this period lasted for nine months. In the second photo, I included a woman who at, you know, you would look at this outfit and know that she is perhaps in second mourning. Uh, there is more detail to her dress. The veil is worn behind her head. She um, would, if she wanted to wear jewelry, she would wear something made out of the material jet. Jet jewelry was all black, so it would mix in with the garment. I will go into a little bit more detail as far as like what jet jewelry is in the next few slides. And um, I'll show you how to kind of use that um, that type of jewelry or that type of look for your Lolita outfit to give it more authenticity. Um, the final stage of mourning is half mourning, which is a uh, subdued colors were socially acceptable when you are at this stage of mourning. Uh, these colors included uh, purple, gray, um, but one thing that if a woman wore gray or purple, you would notice that it would have either some sort of a black trim. Um, the photo provided here in the slide would show me that this piece is of half mourning. It is an all gray ensemble with black trim. Uh, this would typically be something that they would wear during half mourning and this period only lasted about three months. So it, it was kind of rigorous, but um, everything came with like certain steps of what was socially acceptable to wear once you were done with a certain period and people would know um, you know, how how soon your loved one died, just, you know, typically by seeing how you were dressed. So here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at a few pieces that I would look at and think that I could build a Victorian morning inspired outfit from. Um, as you all may know that Lolita fashion does borrow a lot of inspiration from different time periods. There is Rococo, there is, um, of course, Victorian. You would see it in a lot of uh, classic dresses, some Gothic dresses, uh, lots of Gothic dresses could be considered that uh, as Victorian mourning, or you could dress it up to look Victorian mourning. Um, but I'd like to 
think that two notable brands, in my opinion, that you could find and build off a um, build off from them an outfit would be Shegley and Victorian Maiden. I think they provide a mature Victorian uh, inspired look. It's, uh, it's very subdued, um, as you can see here with the late the black lace dress. Black lace dress doesn't have that many details. It's uh, very easy to build off of. And when I say build off of, you can easily, um, you could accessorize this very easily with any sort of uh, anything as far as like accessories goes that would resemble the Victorian morning era. Um, these are pieces from Shigley. I think these are also very good pieces that you can build off of. This one in particular is a, a very, it's very, plain, I suppose, but you could accessorize this to look like a Victoria Morning outfit. Uh, this cape here is from uh, Victoria Maiden. Uh, you could you could virtually find any other cape. It doesn't necessarily need to be Victoria Maiden. Like you can find a cape anywhere that looks like this. You could go on eBay. You can find it from any other indie brands. You can find it on Etsy. Uh, capes are very important in the Victoria Morning look as well as uh, bonnets. I think this bonnet by Fairy Bird Tail is a good example. Uh, typically, if I wanted to build an outfit that was uh, reminiscent of Victorian morning era, I would stay away from a bonnet that has too many details. Not to say that those are not beautiful in any way, but it just, it doesn't really read Victorian morning to me. And I think a bonnet like this, something much more simpler would translate that better rather than one that's really over the top and um, kind of like brings a lot of attention to the top uh, of your outfit. So what I'm gonna go ahead and show you here is some must have items for your morning inspired look. Um, as I mentioned before, a simple black JSK or an OP to work off of as a base. I think with Victorian morning inspired outfits, uh, your accessories are the most important piece of your outfit. So it's good to pick up an item that is just plain black, uh, or depending if you wanna do something in regards to the three steps of morning, if you want to look like you're in full morning, uh, a plain black dress would be great. If you wanna look like you're in half morning, you can try a gray dress and perhaps add some sort of uh, piece to kind of give that nod that this is the last stage of morning and this is what my outfit is based off of. Um, as I mentioned before, capes, lots of rich materials such as velvet and lace, a veil. A veil is very important, I I believe, in for a Victorian morning inspired outfit. It, it gives it that very somber look. It gives it that very sad a uh, very gothic, almost romantic look to it. I think those are very important. A veil, you can find those, I believe, anywhere. I have a veil that I've found on eBay for only like $5. You can go vintage uh, antique shopping or thrift shopping. You can find like a white veil, perhaps maybe dye it black. Very easy to come by. A uh, black bonnet, as I mentioned in the slide prior, something more mature, subdued not over the top, uh, black necklaces and jewelry to resemble jet jewelry. When I show coordinate examples, I will show you what I personally have in my um, collection that would uh, translate to jet jewelry. Black Victorian style boots are also very important. Uh, simple black purse, a black parasol, which in my opinion, I don't know if maybe it's just me, I don't see a lot of Lolitas nowadays using parasols and that's like one accessory that like I miss and I wish would make a comeback. I wish people would wear would use more parasols because I just think that they're so beautiful and they bring an outfit together. And um, the last point here is an actual antique item from the past. And as I mentioned, it would bring some authenticity to your look. But um, in the next slides or in my examples, I'm gonna show you that it doesn't necessarily need to be from Victorian era or late Victorian era. You can find a cape from like a different era that kind of nods to that Victorian morning aesthetic, but it doesn't have to be Victorian.
Okay. So here are some coordinate examples. And uh, this one here on the left, oops, sorry about that. This one here on the left is a one piece from Juliette and Justine. I found this one on Wonderwalt and it was pretty cheap. <laughs> I like to say that because I feel like when it comes to plain black pieces, you could find them at a pretty good price. I know that they're very popular. Um, very popular. They'll always be popular just because I think everybody always wants something that they could wear on an everyday and also dress up to like go to a party. But this one was one that I think I'm pretty lucky to find. And uh, I think like an all plain, all black piece, like all black piece would, would work very well for this look. Uh, the cape accompanied it is a late 1800s cape with uh, fur lining and beading. This is uh, also something that, again, something from the time era that brings authenticity to the look. I've included some boots here that aren't necessarily Victorian style, but they kind of have that influence. And I think that it works well with these types of outfits. Um, these boots are actually from Forever 21. And I think that, I think they just look great. They're not, they're not 100% Victorian. I'm not gonna sit here and say that they're from the Victorian era. They're literally from Forever 21, but they're comfortable to walk in. They have the pointed toe. They have that inspiration, and I think these work very well, especially since like Victorian boots are very expensive. You're looking at at least ones that you could wear with everyday look. You're looking at spending at least upwards to maybe $200 to $300 and above, depending on what you're looking for, of course. Um, I've also added in this photo some gloves. I apologize if it's hard to see, but um, I added some gloves here that I found while uh, I think it was a vintage store here in Pasadena. I found these for uh, $5. They're all black, worn leather. I think the more distressed it looks, the more the, the older it looks, it it gives it a very creepy, it gives it a creepy vibe. I don't know, me personally, I like clothing that has small imperfections, uh, be it a rip or the weather, the, the, the leather is wearing, weathering down. That's something that I personally like. Um, if that's something that you you don't like, you can easily come buy black gloves. Um, again, eBay is your best friend. You can find them on just uh, websites that sell gothic clothing, uh, either black fishnet or all black leather, anything like that. And um, I think those are really good accessories to have. Um, and this coordinate on the right hand side, um, I feel like this has a little bit more detail. This is an outfit that I came up with about say maybe like two years ago. Um, I mentioned before that like the items that you put into your outfits don't necessarily have to be Victorian. Um, this cape, for example, the outer cape on this outfit is actually a piece from the 1960s. I found this also while antique vintage shopping. And um, the JSK used for this outfit is also a piece from Juliette and Justine. I purchased this at um, Closet Child in Ikebukuro last time I was in Japan. And uh, this was also a special gem to find. It's velvet, it has beautiful lace trim, and it's simple, it's all black. I, it's, it's perfect and I needed to have it in my, in my collection. Um, the front piece of this dress is not part of the dress, it's actually a second cape. It's called a Victorian morning mantle. And uh, the front here, is actually supposed to be worn on the back. Um, the front is a little bit more plain, but I actually love the details on the back, so I decided to put it on the front of the dress. Um, the hat necessarily isn't Victorian morning, but this is a hat that I commissioned from a really good friend of mine. She made this for me um, to go with this outfit, so I think it it kind of gives it more of a modern goth look to it, not necessarily Victorian morning, but it gives it a modern goth look with Victorian morning um, undertones. I also like to include that the Victorians were also fascinated with taxidermy. And I know that taxidermy isn't for everybody. I I 100% know that. And I, I, I support anybody who doesn't really uh, support taxidermy. This is actually an older fox stole piece that I also incorporated in the outfit. 
just because I feel like it gave it that really creepy Victorian vibe that, uh, you know, they were so obsessed with, they're just obsessed with death. And I just think that like adding that in there, but just, it makes the outfit, the outfit itself is very beautiful, but it has that element of like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so I think that's why I, I integrated it into this outfit. And it's actually one of my favorites. I, I love this. If if there's like anything that can show you what my, my Lolita style is now, it is this photo. Definitely. I'm going to go and show you uh, some close-ups of accessories that you could put into a Victorian morning outfit. So uh, these are some detail shots. In this one here, uh, it's very over the top, but it's all very, uh, it's all one color scheme. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and talk again about jet jewelry. Jet, jet beaded jewelry at the time was very popular because as I mentioned, there were certain type, times of mourning where you could not wear uh, bright jewelry or jewelry of any kind. So jet jewelry was what they, uh, they preferred to wear with their ensembles once they were out of that first half of mourning. And um, I think these pieces are great examples, of, not necessarily from the time because they're not. This necklace here is, I think this was a, a, a just a vintage find. I don't quite remember where I bought it. This one here is from, it's from H&M. This stole here is from the fashion district in downtown LA. The belt here, this is from vintage shopping. And uh, the one piece that I'm wearing in this photo is, I believe, from Victoria Maiden, if I if I can remember correctly. But it kind of uh, it gives it that uh, authenticity of of oh okay this is this is supposed to be jet jewelry, but it's not jet jewelry. It gives it it gives it that vibe. I also um, added something like very small, like a, it's, it's like a small pop. This uh, brooch that I used to have. It says at rest. This is supposed to be like a casket plate. And I just thought it it just kind of like gives that nudge and it gives that sign like this is inspired by Victorian morning. Uh, this second photo here is uh, the detail shot of one of the coordinates I showed prior to this uh, slide. And um, again, this shows you examples of jet jewelry, that's not necessarily jet, but it looks like jet jewelry. This beaded necklace, I guess you would say would be morning beads. This is just a necklace that I found for like a dollar at the fashion district a very long time ago. It's It wasn't that expensive. Uh, just jewelry that looks very, uh, again, muted, subdued, not too over the top. Uh, this necklace here was, uh, you know, just a, I believe I found this somewhere in San Francisco. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this is just the detail on the cape. And uh, this piece is is one of my favorite accessories. This is from a artist named uh, Moss Marchin. Uh, Moss Marchin is a brand that does cater to that aesthetic as well. She's a very talented artist. She bar, uh, She is inspired by the time. A lot of her pieces reflect that. And uh, this is just a morning ribbon. This is actually made of 100% of silk. She hand sews these. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful piece. And um, I knew I just had to have it for my outfits because it reflects what I wear now. And then this last photo here, uh, this is the morning mantle that I wore in one of the other coordinates in the previous slide, but this is worn how it's supposed to be worn behind. Uh, the OP that I'm wearing here is from Innocent World. It's all plain black, but of course I put a cape to kind of give it more detail. Um, here, this hat that I'm wearing is a, it was a damaged hat actually that I, I believe I found it while antique shopping and I kind of just like fixed it and I put, um, I put a velvet ribbon. I fixed sort, I kind of fixed some of the brim. And uh, I think it looked, I looked, it looked really well with this outfit. I actually wore this for a Victorian morning tours here at the doctor's house in Glendale. It is an event that they would do every Halloween. You would go and you would, uh, you would witness a Victorian seance. Uh, they would uh, bake morning cookies. It was a whole ritual. I'm really heartbroken that I got to miss it this year because they're not doing this event this year, of course, but 
um, it's it's lots of fun. And if you're ever here in Southern California for you know during this time and and there is no restrictions, they usually have this event in Glendale. There's also one at the Heritage Square Museum that does a Victorian morning tour. That is so much fun. And uh, you get to see full Victorian morning outfits. They give you a rundown of, of you know, what each piece is. They give you a history lesson and it's all inside of an actual Victorian home. So it's lots of fun. Sorry about that. So. In this slide, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give you some brands and uh, some, some artists that uh, also cater to this aesthetic if you would like to start integrating the uh, Victorian morning style into your Gothic looks. Um, some accessories and from some brands would be Koneko. I think Koneko uh, is a indie Russian brand. They make a really beautiful, uh, Kokoshnik style um, headpieces, but they also make bonnets. They have one bonnet. It's a transparent black one that you could like decorate with, I believe it's beads, feathers, black roses. And uh, I think those bonnets just look so beautiful in Victorian morning outfits. And they're not too over the top, but they're just as beautiful. And they, they're just they're just perfect in all of their creations. They're they're actually they're absolutely super talented, and I'll, I can provide links to what Kaneko, where you can find Kaneko, and uh, oops, sorry. Um, another brand, as I mentioned before, would be uh, Moss Marchin, and Moss Marchin you can find her on Instagram. I've included her Instagram handle here as well as a photo of the morning ribbons. Uh, super talented, lots uh, loves embroidery, loves to make the uh, the morning brooches, uh, embroidery jewelry. It's all very Victorian, all very somber. It, it's they're just beautiful pieces. Um, not necessarily Lolita, but Blood Milk is also a really good brand that you could uh, put into your outfits. They do have pieces that are a bit of well, an investment piece, as you would say. It's very modern morning. Uh, the creator of Blood Milk, she borrows a lot of inspiration from the time to make her jewelry. And I think a lot of her pieces are quite special. Uh, you could find main pieces uh, at Sheglit, as I mentioned before. Victorian Maiden is a very good example. Also not included here, and I should have, I apologize, Innocent World. Innocent World has a lot of plain uh, black dresses that you could decorate and accessorize to resemble Victorian mourning. And uh, yeah, a lot of their pieces are very special. I have a lot of um, Innocent World pieces in my in my collection and they usually don't go for that much. It isn't very much of a highly sought out brand like, like Motier or Julia Etchestine. Um, another brand, of course, Atelier Piro. Uh, as one person will mention the true AP, please Angelic Pretty fans, do not kill me. <laughs> but to me, this is the one true AP. Um, they have a lot of really good pieces with uh, frills, a lot of draping. You can also find a lot of indie brands within them that also have pieces that you could integrate into your Victorian morning inspired look. And I mentioned having Victorian shoes. And these are two companies that I swear by. I, I absolutely love the shoes from Oak Tree Farms. I personally don't owe a pair yet. It, they are investment pieces, but they're just absolutely beautiful. And from reviews that I have read, they last for a really long time. They're well made, and they're just they're just gorgeous. This um, piece that I've included here, this example is just it's a true testament to how a lot of their shoes look. So I definitely recommend you guys checking that one out. Um, and of course, American Duchess. I, I believe uh, many Lolitas know American Duchess by now. They have a lot of historically inspired footwear and. Their, their shoes are just top quality, really nice, very beautiful, and they last you a really long time, which is a good thing. And I've added going vintage and antique shopping for this particular look. And you can go online, you can go to estate sales, provided that it's okay to go to them once all of this is over. Um, you can go uh, uh, thrifting. Sometimes you can find some gems while thrifting. I think with this look, the fun thing about it is that you could put um, vintage items and antique items 
or as on the market, they're known as wounded birds. Wounded birds meaning uh, pieces that have like, say for example, like a rip or they're missing the closures in the back or the buttons and you could just totally add them on yourself, of course, but typically those pieces sell for a really cheap price. And I love to buy just uh, items that would be considered wounded birds and putting them into my outfit. It And it just kind of gives it a, it, it makes your outfit unique. Like you know that nobody else is gonna have the exact same blouse as you, or you know that somebody is not gonna have the exact same like hair brooch as you. I just, I think that it's so special to go vintage and antique shopping. And uh, I think it's also really fun to go with a group of people as well. I mean, of course, not now. I just, I hate, so sad. But um, once this is all over, I think it's really good to um, have like, you know, maybe a small Lolita meetup where everybody just goes vintage and antique shopping. I think it's just so much fun. So in this slide, um, I'm going to go ahead and give some, I guess, some books or anything that you could like uh, read or research if you want to learn more about the Victorian era. You can learn more about Victorian fashion. Um, I actually have some examples here. One of them that I've mentioned here is the Beyond the Dark Veil. Uh, Beyond the Dark Veil shows examples of a postmortem photography. Uh, it has it has many like uh, examples of how you could see how they how they cherish their loved ones, their you know people who have passed. Um, you can also look at these for um, also references. It's it's a wonderful book. Um, this is a first edition when it came out. I needed to have this. Like this is just like it's it's such a special book. But you could find this um, you could find this pretty much anywhere now. I know that here in Southern California, you could find this at a Halloween Town in Burbank they have copies of this as well as the Mystic at the Mystic Museum, which is also on the same street, Magnolia Boulevard in Burbank. Um, another another uh, book or any type of book, like you can find these pretty much anywhere. You can find them at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, uh, your local bookstore. They're just uh, fashion plates uh, from the time period, of course. I don't know if you could see that there, but I apologize if you, I apologize if you can't, but pretty much the inside would just have like references to uh, what you would possibly look for or what you could be inspired by to add to your outfits. It has collections of hats, uh, bags, bonnets, all of it. it. And here I could put this up here that if anybody wants to look for it, this is the book. And I also mentioned this book in the list of books that you should look into if you're a little bit more interested in diving a little deeper into uh, Victorian Morning. This is an excellent book. I don't know how to start, like, sorry, I'm nerding out here, but it it's just, it, it gives you so many examples on like the Victorian Morning era. It also gives you uh, photos of like funeral cards. It gives you postmortem photography, and it gives you it gives you all kinds of beautiful examples of of hair jewelry. Oh, they're so beautiful. It, I love this book. I think if you're interested in in learning a little bit more about this time, this book is definitely it to use as a reference and uh, to learn a little bit more on how they made hair jewelry, how um, certain practices were done at the time. This is a really good book. If you ever find it, seriously, put it in your collection. Um, everything else here, you could uh, plug in the name of the book and uh, find it online. And I think that would be the end of my presentation. Um, of course, uh, I can open for a few questions after this panel, but if you have anything else that you would like to personally send me, or if you want some coordinating advice, uh, you're more than more than welcome to message me at, uh, at my Instagram here. It's provided here at the end. And of course, you could check out my, my work, which is at Taxidermy Her Bones, which is also Instagram. And um, yeah, I think that is it. That's all I have. So if you guys have any questions, you guys can go ahead and, and shoot.
Okay, one of the questions here is, um, okay, so as far as the black armbands, I know that most of them were made from the material crepe or, or crepe or whatever you could say. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Um, it's uh, It was a material at the time that was used to make Victoria Morning clothing because it was so cheap to use and integrate it into outfits. Um, that, that's typically what the morning armbands would be made of. If if you wanted to do a, a Victorian inspired look, something that men would wear, you could use that, you could use silk, you could use a normal ribbon. And um, I, I think that would look really, it would look really great. Um, as far as markings go, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them to perhaps maybe embroider like the initials of their loved one. Um, that is something that they were really into as well. Embroidery, they would use a lot of monograms in necklaces and jewelry. In some hair pieces, you can see the initials of the loved one. And then like, uh, sometimes they would have like a swivel, it would be like a swivel piece of like hair jewelry. And on the back, it would have the monogram. So I would not put it past them to perhaps maybe embroider or sew in the initials of their loved ones on the band, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and yes, as far as, as we're talking about men in mourning, uh, no, there were not that strict of rules for men. Um, as far as I know, they were only able to wear the band and pretty much just like a plain white shirt. I mean, plain white button up, the, the, the overcoat, just a simple Victorian men's Victorian outfit, but with a black armband. And again, it typically lasted for like six months and then they were off to go look for another sweetheart, which is kind of grim, but that's just, that's just how it was at the time. Oh yeah, okay, about the antique capes, yes. The dyes were extremely toxic. There's actually, um, with with green with green dresses at the time, a lot of them were also dyed with arsenic. So if you see anything green during the, like a Victorian piece that was green, it, I would kind of stay away from those pieces as much as I think that they're very beautiful. I haven't really seen one in real life, but I would know not to wear it. Uh, yeah, like it, it's, 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 yes, it would have like extremely, extremely toxic properties to them. But what if you wanted to, honestly, I, I ain't got nothing to say to that. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Radium paint. As far as the morning hand, morning hand symbolism, I'm not 100% sure when that became popular. Um, I know that you could find those, I know that you can find a lot of them on like headstones I, at, at cemeteries. Uh, I'm not 100% sure when it became popular, but that is also something that you can integrate into the outfit because it was a symbol that was used a lot during the time. So if anyone else has any other questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. But thank you everybody. Thank you so much for joining me in this panel. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Bay Area Key for having me as a guest. And um, I would, you know, I would love to do this again. I love to talk. I, I love to talk about this again. If you guys want to message me, uh, it's Marie Dauphine at Instagram. Message me. We could talk about this stuff. If you have anything to educate me on, I would be more than happy to just hear you talk it out. Like type it, send me a message like, hey, uh, Marie, I found this. Like, oh, did you know about this? Please. I love to be educated. I love to talk about this stuff and I love history. Uh, so 
that would be really great if you guys could send me that. And again, check out my uh, Instagram where I make my jewelry. It's taxidermy her bones at, at Instagram. So thank you.